From Washington, this is VOA News. Iran nuclear talks open in Geneva. Afghan tribal leaders to vote on U.S.-Afghan security pact. I'm Ray Kugel reporting from Washington. Iranian and international negotiators will continue a key series of meetings today that officials say could lead to the first steps toward guaranteeing that Iran's nuclear program is purely peaceful and toward easing economic sanctions. VOA's Al Pesson reports from the meeting site in Geneva. Wednesday's first meeting of the full group was only 45 minutes long, but officials say that was the plan and bilateral meetings were to continue well into the night. This is the third time in five weeks that negotiators from Iran's new government and the Six Nation Contact Group have met. Last time, Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif criticized the U.N. negotiators for changing course, a move widely attributed to French insistence on some key points. But during a stop in Italy on his way here, Zarif expressed optimism for this round. I'm sure that with the necessary political will, we can certainly make progress and even reach an agreement. Al Pesson, VOA News, Geneva. A car bomb targeting an army convoy exploded in Egypt's Sinai Peninsula, killing at least 10 soldiers. The attack occurred Wednesday as the convoy was traveling on a road crossing to the Gaza Strip. There has been no claim of responsibility. Indonesia is suspending military and intelligence cooperation with its traditional ally, Australia, after allegations that Australian spies listened in on the phone calls of senior Indonesian officials. The move was announced Wednesday in a nationally televised address by President Yudhoyono, whose phone calls were among those reported to be intercepted. The UN says it's raised just over a third of the money it needs to provide emergency aid in the central Philippines, 12 days after the region was devastated by Typhoon Haiyan. The UN is requesting $301 million to cover six months of emergency aid, including food, shelter, and medical care for the hundreds of thousands who are now displaced by that typhoon. Secretary of State John Kerry says the United States and Afghanistan have reached agreement on the final text of a bilateral security pact that will determine the presence of U.S. troops in Afghanistan after 2014. Afghanistan's President Hamid Karzai negotiated the agreement with U.S. officials, but a grand council of more than 2,500 Afghan elders known as the Lawyer Jirga must give its approval. Sharon Bain has details from Kabul. Tribal and community elders from around Afghanistan have started arriving in Kabul to decide on the details of a security pact with the United States. Security is tight around the capital. Over the weekend, a bomb exploded some 500 meters from the site of the gathering, a stark reminder of the militant threat in the country. Such concerns over security, as well as Afghan suspicions of neighbors Pakistan and Iran, have lawmakers backing the security agreement. President Hamid Karzai has negotiated a draft agreement with U.S. officials, but the Tribal Assembly, or Loya Jirga, must give its approval before the document goes to Parliament for a vote. Sharon Bain, VOA News, Kabul. Nigerian lawmakers have approved a six-month extension of the state of emergency in areas where troops are fighting Islamist militants. President Goodluck Jonathan declared a state of emergency in three northeastern states last May as part of efforts to defeat the militant group Boko Haram. President Obama awarded a nation's highest civilian honor, the Presidential Medal of Freedom, to 16 Americans in her ceremony at the White House. The award honors those who have made outstanding contributions to the security or national interest of the U.S., 
to world peace or to other significant public or private endeavors. The recipients this year include former President Bill Clinton, country music legend Loretta Lynn, women's rights activist Gloria Steinem, and television icon Oprah Winfrey. Consumer prices are easing in the United States. They're being pushed down by a drop in gasoline prices that motorists are paying at surf stations. Gas prices dropped almost 3% in October. That's because world oil prices declined and U.S. oil production advanced. I'm Ray Kugel, VOA News. Details on these and other stories on our website on the Internet at voanews.com.